Hello, everybody. My name's Tom Griffin. I'm the Chief of Police here in the City of Peabody. I just wanted to welcome you to the next episode of uh, Peabody Police Patrol. Today, I'm here with my friend Erica Barrett and, and our son Ryan, and we're going to talk about some issues that surround handicap parking and disability throughout the uh, City of Peabody. Uh, we wanted to get together to talk about this because we feel it's important that people understand the rules as they pertain to handicap parking and why it's important, not only because it's the uh, law, but it impacts people that actually need those spaces and, and how that creates a lot of problems for them. The, the message for today, the bottom line is, if you don't belong parking in those spots, just please don't. Be courteous and, and uh, leave those for people that actually need them. I'm going to talk about the police perspective and the law enforcement perspective while Erica is going to speak about how that impacts uh, people out in the community because she's all over the place. You'll see her all over Peabody uh, with her son here and uh, she needs these spaces. Uh, to be able to get around and to get into places here in PV. Would you say, Erica? Yes. Some days are challenging to get out, but we love to be out in the um, out in the city. And sometimes just finding that parking space so I can get the van down and get Ryan out safely can be challenging sometimes. And to leave him out in the street while I find a spot, it's not always safe. And it can also cause behavioral issues um, later on because he doesn't understand why I'm going back into the car and he's not going back into the car. Um, but not just Ryan, there'll be people with canes, walkers, um, people that may have had surgeries, they need that extra space to get in and out of the car safely. Um, people that park in additional spots, they consider the, the lines, those lines are there for a purpose, they're there for ramps to get down, doors to be widened, um, to be opened wide so people can get in and out safely. Yeah, over time you probably notice that there's the traditional handicapped space and then there's another space next to it with a lot of lines in it. Those have been designed for a purpose. For example with Erica she has a van and she has to drop the side door and, and uh, drop down a ramp to be able to have Ryan come out. So some people don't understand that. Another issue that a number of different people have talked to me about is when people just kind of pull in there and idle and they think that, oh, it's not that big a deal. I mean, how, how does that uh, impact what you're trying to do, Erica? Um, it does get a little you know, irritating when you see them idling and you know that that's a spot that you really could use to get out. And there's times that we've left places. We've left the mall or an event because we can't get him down safely. You know, I don't want to always go to people's cars. You don't know what their reactions yeah, are going to be. Is, uh, so um, that makes it difficult. From, from the police perspective, um, our parking clerk here, Terry Palmasano, uh, she does a wonderful job. She's very understanding. If if people are unsure about whether you know their their placard was the proper one, um, she'll always she'll always take that into consideration if someone gets a parking ticket. And because of that, she got together with one of my police officers, Maria Ariello, and they developed this uh, handicap guide that you can find here at the police station, you can find it at City Hall, you can find it at a number of different city buildings. You can also get it online at the PBD Police Department website at www.pbdpolice.org. Uh, there's all kinds of information, anything you would need to know about this in terms of handicap parking. There's also in the middle of it an application, but you can take it and you can give it to your doctor and fill it out and uh, actually get your own placket. We're trying to educate people so that um, they do the right thing to make Erica's life easy, to make everybody else's life easier that actually needs these spaces because if you're using it improperly, you could get a $150 fine. There's the, a very strong potential that those fines could actually go up as much as uh, up to $300 possibly. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, unfortunately, what we run into are people that um, make up their own placards, make fake ones up or, or use um, ones that aren't supposed to be used by them and um, if you're doing that and it's an improper use of the placket you could actually have um, a court complaint issued at the district court. So we're just asking people to be mindful of, of the problems that uh, they create by parking in a space that they really shouldn't um, be parked in. Um, just be a little considerate to folks that actually need it and um, we just want to um, you know get that message out. We don't really, I you know my guys don't like giving out tickets but you know that that's our function if, you know, if we have to do that. And uh, if it costs a few hundred dollars to get people to change their behavior, then that's what we're, we're gonna be doing. So uh, hopefully this will come across the right way. We just wanna, you know, make things, you know, a little bit easier for people that need these spaces. So thank you for your time. And we're gonna take a walk up to the middle school right now and uh, show you folks exactly what we're talking about. 
Alrighty, so here we are at the fabulous Higgins Middle School, one of the best middle schools in the state. Uh, they have an awesome handicapped parking spot here, and we're just going to show you the difficulty that Erica can have trying to get Ryan in and out of the van here, and this is why she needs the space that um, has been set aside for her. So if, if you want to show yeah, the folks how, what we're talking about. So it's not just putting the ramp down, I now have to get Ryan out. Mm So once you get down, you also have to be able to turn the wheelchairs around. So as you can see, it's very important for people to have this available to them. So if, if uh, you know, just pl our, our message today is just please don't park here. Please don't make it difficult for her and for her son Ryan. I mean, they're just trying to go into the school or go into a store and, and go about their day. I mean, it's really difficult for her if she has to leave Ryan on the sidewalk while she backs the, the van out to be able to put the, the ramp down properly. And she's just one of thousands upon thousands of people in the city and all across the country that um, have these concerns. So just be courteous to your, your fellow drivers and, and park where you're supposed to park. I mean, the, the closest spaces are right there, 10 feet away, and it's the way it usually is in most parking lots. So just do the right thing and uh, be courteous to your, to your neighbors. That's the message we're trying to get across, right? We really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. All righty, we're back. What a great day for the first day of March. We couldn't ask for nicer weather. So um, we just wanted to come back and chat with you folks for a couple of minutes because Erica and I actually uh, first met through um, the PBD Disability Commission here in the city. In 2016, uh, with, under the leadership of Mayor Betancourt, the city of Peabody developed the PBD Commission on Disability. It's chaired by our human resource director, Beth O'Donnell, and the vice chair is actually Tom Gould, the yeah. city councilor, and Erica is actually the treasurer of the uh, commission. And we meet once a month to discuss oh, issues surrounding I'm access uh, in the city, whether it's a public building or out on the sidewalks or out on the streets. And we also talk about handicap parking. And I'll, I'll just read this to you. The actual purpose of the commission is to bring about full and equal participation of people with disabilities in all aspects of life. It works to assure advancement of legal rights and the promotion of maximum opportunities, support services, accommodations, and accessibility in a manner which fosters dignity and self-determination. So we work with a number of different uh, department heads. They come to the meetings all the time to talk about issues within the city that uh, people have brought to our attention or we've just noticed by going around or if um, you need something and um, you've come across it yourself, people bring it to the, uh, to the commission. We've worked with um, the DPW director, and I think Erica can fill you in on what that was all about. Yes, I think uh, one of the biggest accomplishments we've started doing with the commission is um, Safe Street Project. Mm -hmm. I know I can tell you from I live off of Lynn Street, and the Lynn Street project is going fantastic. Um, it's going to start back up in the spring. I've been working with DPW um, about how to get Ryan around. Um, our neighborhood safely and we have a stroller that we go around with and we also he's learning to drive on his own so he likes going down to the stores and things like that and goes and sees all his friends so that's great but also the Gardner Street's got a great project going on over there for safe streets um, and the city will be working and continue that back up in the spring. Yeah, They focus on the um, making sure the pavement's nice and smooth there's no um, tree roots that are cracking up the sidewalks and they're also really really a huge important thing and I think you'll agree is the curb cuts and how important because not all the, the curbing is cut so that a wheelchair can, can make it. And uh, if people identify those problems, they bring them to our attention. We, uh, we bring them to Mr. Terenzoni at DPW and, and if they can, they put it on the list of things to correct. And it's just, it's, it's just a good way to try and make access around the city better for everybody that needs it. Um, one of the other issues we have in the city is we have, a, we have some apartment complexes that have been built for a while. And, and the codes have changed in, in regards to the number of handicapped spaces per um, apartment complexes or people living in a particular building. And, you know, the building inspector's office will send an inspector out and make sure, you know, if one's brought to our attention, we'll relay it to the building inspector and they'll send somebody out 
to make sure the numbers are, are, are where they should be. And we've actually had uh, uh, some great cooperation with some of these apartment complexes around town and they've, they've reconfigured their parking lots so that um, you know, they're up to the way the code should be. So there's a lot of good work that goes on with this commission. Uh, like I said, it meets um, once a month and um, we would encourage you to come down and, and join us. At, uh, the next meeting is March 15th at four o'clock at City Hall. Um, if you can't make it down and you have some concern that you think we should be addressing, you can feel free to email um, our chairwoman, uh, and that's Beth O'Donnell, and her email is beth.odonnell, that's O-D-O-N-N-E-L-L, at pbd-ma.gov. Um, any concern you might have, we'll be happy to look at it and address it and see if we can fix it. If you're not uh, on the computer and you don't really do email, uh, you can still just send a traditional letter to her at uh, City Hall at 24 Lowell Street and we'll work on whatever problem that um, you know is brought to our attention. Erica is the treasurer. We're starting to um, have a little bit of a budget. Is there some parameters around what we can do with the money, Erica? I think do that you? we're looking to educate. I think so, educate right. people and everybody in the town and um, make them aware of what's going on yeah. so and you what's may, available for them. Sure. So things like what we're doing right now, doing this sort of a public announcement of what's going on, public safety announcement, or you may see something on a billboard or, or signs or flyers just talking about um, access and how it's important and, and how we want to we want to move forward and give everybody as much access as possible. Right? Sound good? Yes, sounds really good. Thank you. Well, thanks for tuning in and everybody have a great day. Mm -hmm. Take care.